Welcome back to the Tigerium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I'm going to talk about all of these rumors and leaks that have been coming out this week for Hasbro and their Transformers line. And I've got to say that there's a lot of really good stuff coming down the pipeline, if it's really true. Most of these, this is JT Prime, I believe, that revealed a lot of this stuff. And most of this stuff is, it makes sense. It's been on some of these leak lists in the past. But I'm not going to lie, I'm excited for this, and I'm mostly excited for third-party masterpiece, the legends, and that kind of stuff. But if Hasbro is going to do it, do it right, it also gets me excited too. And I was really thinking, I'm not going to be buying much Hasbro stuff this year. But if they put out stuff I like, then it's going to be great. Sadly, most of this is going to be for 2025. But let's get into looking at what's coming from Hasbro. That's really good. Coming up. First up, we are going to get a leader Megatron. Now, that's a big deal because it's been Voyager Megatrons. And it's the Siege Line Megatron that's been kind of redone and remolded slightly. We're going to be getting... What is probably the last iteration of that mold with this bridge playset or playset. It's a bridge set of three and we're supposed to be getting what Shockwave and then we're going to be getting Soundwave. And that's a pretty good set. It sold out at, at the Hasbro Pulse online. But BBTS I think might still have it. But I've got mine on pre-order. I'm going to be getting that. But a leader is something different. Now it's going to have more, more articulation. Probably a whole lot more stuff going on with it for the transformation it will be more sophisticated because it's a leader but it's probably not gonna be any bigger than this one right here but i think this one looks really good but still i'm just speculating all this is still pure speculation but it's still exciting the next one they were talking about is a galvatron now the thing about this is that we've seen this galvatron and it's a good galvatron i'm not gonna slight it at all i think it's great but i've seen it a lot on shelves everywhere but the one thing that got me to stop and think is that I've never really seen it on clearance. And if it was on clearance, it might have been like a real beat-up box or something like that. But it's never been like, hey, this thing's 20 bucks. The Starscream? Yeah, the Starscream, I think, was packed with this. And that thing was everywhere for like 15 bucks. But this thing, I never saw it for 15 bucks. Maybe I just missed it or it, it sold out real fast. But they could just put out this mold again. They're doing a lot of mold reissues in these leaks, which is not a surprise, but they might revamp it and go a whole different direction. But I doubt it. I think we'll just see this mold again. Slightly different coloration. All right, so next up, there's the Transformers uh, B127, Transformers 1. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but this picture does come up if you put it in, and it really does kind of match the description. But I don't know exactly what the one they are going to put out is going to look like. So the same thing kind of goes when it says something in here about Transformers 1 and something along those lines, I kind of assume it's just going to be a Bumblebee version or something along that. The one designs will be different, though. I do believe there's going to be an Optimus Prime, a Starscream, a couple others for the Transformers 1, and I'm just speculating on what they'll look like. So let's get into the next one, and it's a different character. Now, it does say there's a Transformers 7 Double Punch, and I will admit, I don't know anything about a character Double Punch, so I looked into the G1 era, and this is what comes up. And I'm not exactly sure if it was one in the movie or anything along those lines. But with that, this character here transforms into this thing here. Did they make one? Was there one in the movie? So I'm not sure what's going on with that. But it's kind of fun to look and see what the G1 one was. But there's a whole lot of other stuff that is G1 and will be G1. So that's what excites me the most. Now the next one's called a Transformers Movie 3 Hatchet. I guess it's this thing here. I looked up a picture, this is what it looks like. I don't know for sure, but it does look cool. Kind of looks like a giant Ravage. But let's get into the stuff that I know about. Now there's going to be a Perceptor with a package refresh. I don't think the Wheeljack's going to be part of it, but found this picture, Perceptor. Now I'm not sure what the refresh is going to look like, but I do want to point this out, and this was brought to my attention. Why do they want to refresh packaging so much? Why not just put it out in the same exact packaging? Because retailers want something fresh on the shelf from a point of sale aspect that it looks different. It is something different. Even if it's the same item inside, it looks different. You see that with housewares. You see that with appliances. You see that with a lot of other things. It happens in the toys, but it's a retailer demand thing to change up the package. And it just makes them happier. But it's also a business contract kind of deal that you refresh the package so often. 
Same thing's going to happen with jazz, and this really surprises me just a little bit. The Studio Series Jazz, which great jazz, great figure. I actually had a whole lot of fun when they first started with these, these Movie 86 Studio Series. But I have to say that they're going to put this in that, I don't know if it's a five-pack or if it's going to be like two, three two-packs or a two-pack and a three-pack, but everyone thinks it's a five-pack that's going to be kind of more cartoon accurate and that kind of stuff. But they're doing a refresh on the packaging on this at the same time they're doing that. Now, I'm thinking, why would they do that? Well, it also sort of makes sense if they're already going to be producing that figure for the five-pack, then why not produce it for a separate release? But then again, why not produce all of them for separate releases? A lot of that doesn't make sense, but this is kind of how business is done with Hasbro these days. So I'm not going to source pictures for all of these, but I'm just going to kind of show this one, talk about it. They're going to put back out the Voyager, War for Cybertron, Skywarp, Siege, from, was it five years ago now? The Siege, four and a half, five years ago when Siege was a thing. But Siege is what really changed, changed everything, and it made... All the figures in scale instead of having like a giant Optimus Prime, a medium, and a small, and then all these different figures and all these different scales. It pretty much made the whole line scale together, which was a good thing. But this is going to come as a Tetrajet. Again, I, I should throw this disclaimer in like five times. This is pure speculation, 100% rumor. I don't know for fact on any of this stuff. This is my guess. I'm speculating, putting that out there. Anyway, I believe they're all going to be Tetrajets again. Same exact thing. They were good for what they are. They're not exactly Tetra Jets. They're not exactly what the show the in the TV series. It's not exactly what we saw. And some other companies, third-party companies, have done it better in the past. But still, it's close and it's decent. But I thought they kind of abandoned the mold, but now they're bringing it back. But what else are we getting? So War for Cybertron and Ironhide. Now, this is where it starts to make me wonder if my speculation is wrong even on the Tetra Jets. Is it going to be War for Cybertron as in the game? Or is it going to be War for Cybertron for the TV show trilogy? Or are they pretty much close enough together? Still, I think they're going to use the same mold or a similar use of that mold. It'll be interesting to see what it actually looks like when it comes out. We can all speculate together on what it's going to be, but it's a thing. So this is where we get into something that is, it is surprising, but it's not at the same time. They're talking about putting out figures that are for a Devastator. And it's not just one, but three. So they're talking about a Scrapper. They're talking about, I think, a Mixmaster in here. And they're talking about one more Scavenger. So there's three of these Constructicons to build a Devastator. And there, there's a Deluxe Scavenger. Mixmaster's a Voyager. And Scrapper's a Voyager. And it starts to make me wonder, is this going to be 18 inches again? Because I kind of feel like if you have this, it's a lot of people feel like it's out of scale with their new Minotaur, which is great. But at the same time, are they going to figure out a way to make it smaller and match Minotaur more? Or are they going to stay around the same size? I don't know. But I feel like this is a good set. I don't feel like it's a great set. The bot modes suffer. The alt modes are fine. Combine mode with some upgrade kits... It's really good. So I really don't see the need for a new one, but I guess a lot of people do. And the fact that this thing is old, why are they not going to put it back out again? I don't know. Are they just going to reissue these separately? I don't know. We'll see. But it is labeled as a Voyager 86, like a Studio Series 86 kind of thing. One of the, So this wasn't originally Studio Series. This was Combiner Wars. And are they going to remake all the Combiners from Combiner Wars? Are they going to do them all? I mean, that's kind of crazy. Now, the next thing that they're talking about is bringing out Chop, Shop, and Barrage, which are deluxe Insecticons. Now, x is talking about doing those, but there's so much on their plate, and it's really weird. So, x was talking about doing this, but they decided not to, and to jump on top of the Devastator War, which is interesting. And now, Hasbro's doing a Devastator. I really think that x fans toys... Uh, MMC all knew there was going to be an official Devastator coming out. And that's why they're jumping on it, even though they're not the same scale, not the same competition. But anyway, I'm excited for these. I love these. I had a couple of these as a kid. I have most of this in here right now. I started digging through and finding my weapons and stuff and pairing them up because, I mean, in a year and a half, 
when I finally get some new Deluxe Insecticons, it'll be nice to compare them to the originals. But uh, this is a pretty cool idea that they're going to do it. Will they do all four of them? I'm saying yes. I mean, they did the, the three basic ones. I would imagine they do the Deluxe ones, go all the way, and not just do two. I'm sure they'll do four. So next up, they're going to do Bludgeon, which I don't know if Hasbro had any idea that we were going to see a bludgeon from Super 7 in their Ultimates line, which I have yet to open mine. I bought it. I have it just because the original G1 figure is a $300 figure. I have the G1, but it's not complete, and I have no urge to go seek those parts for whatever stupid price and amount that it would cost. But still, it's interesting. What will they do with it? I think they'll do the same thing they've done before with their other Pretender, and it would just be a transformer, not a shell and all the stuff inside. I think they've abandoned the idea of the shell and they went to just something that transforms. But who knows? Who knows? It'll be interesting to see what really comes of it. Then there is a Ruckus, which is pretty cool. It's one of these. Is it a Target Master? Oh, I'm not even sure. It's a G1 figure that is going to get remade. That's cool. It's interesting. It's obscure it's going deep and i'm sure they're testing the waters in all the different eras and deep into g1 where a lot of people kind of dropped out but we'll be interesting to see how it looks i think a lot of the stuff they went deep with when they were doing some of the other lines like the combiner wars and the power of the primes all that kind of stuff were big hits with collectors and i think they were big hits with collectors because they made them look so cool they were just awesome looking transformers that have some sort of history and lore and fun to collect. Now, the next one is Knockout, which is not really a surprise, but here's the red version. They've already made a red version. Now, this Knockout is at Walmarts and probably in your area on clearance. If you're as unlucky as me, they've cleared some down to 20 bucks. That is the original MSRP before they had the massive hyperinflation rate increase, but now it's back to normal price. I'm waiting. It's been two weeks and they still haven't marked it down. I think eventually I'll see this guy the red version for four bucks somewhere at one of the Walmarts, but anyhow, the transforming version might not look as good. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that how will they make it look as good or as animation accurate? I don't think they will. Last we got Transformers Windsweeper, which is a robot turns into an airplane. It is a G1 figure. This is the G1 iteration of it. I don't remember it at all. And it's one of those deep cuts, again, we're getting into, that sounds like a lot of fun. So we'll see what happens with it, what they do with it. Pretty exciting, pretty interesting. Now, again, the disclaimer, this is all rumor, speculation, leak list. May not even ever happen, but probably will. And I'm curious what you think if this stuff comes to fruition. If my pictures match up to the names, then what do you think about all this? And if something I matched up to a name doesn't match... In your opinion, let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and Titanium Hanger, out.